Hi, you're listening to Everyday Superpower, a place where you can take some time to learn about body language and nonverbal communication, where you'll be able to understand who's lying to you, who's attracted to you, and generally be able to communicate on a whole different level once you understand the basics and fundamentals of how people speak their mind through their bodies without even knowing about it. Likewise, you'll be able to see the signals you put out into the world. So if you enjoy the topic at hand, I would appreciate if you click subscribe. More videos to come. Thank you. So today what we're going to talk about is the rocking of the body. All right, so a subconscious rocking back and forth. Now this may be side to side or front to back. And what rhythmically rocking the torso shows is that it is a signal of emotional discomfort given that there is no physical pain, all right? Because uh, let's say, for example, we have stomach cramps. Uh, we may rock side to side or so forth to soothe ourselves and sort of um, to the same degree as to where we're going to get into, but it sort of um, it regresses us to a stage as to where we were rocked as a child, all right? Now, the reason we do it subconsciously is an expression of um, nervous energy so it's a surplus of energy uh, which needs to be released through one means or another um, which is what we see through fidgeting and you know subconscious behaviors which provoke movement in the face of stress and anxiety all right so alongside that expression of nervous energy we may rock back and forth or side to side to also add a regressive aspect uh, linked to our childhood uh, as the child being rocked in the arms of a parent or in a um, cot or so on and so forth, all right, which is very soothing to us mentally. As when we grow up, we still stick with these behaviours and these um you know, early day soothing mechanisms are hardwired into us through our development, all right, through the brain's development. And when we reach an adult stage, we still act in the same manners and we still soothe ourselves in the same way. We just do it in a lot more of an indirect manner because, of course, it's um, societally, um, you know, deemed... You know, it's just not comfortable, all right, to be acting like a big baby in public. It's just not appropriate, all right? So um, it's, it's a very indirect means of the rocking of the child. It's symbolic of that. So uh, nervous energy, right? A surplus. And um, so it's like the fidgeting and it's like the kicking foot, okay, which signifies an uncontrollable amount of pent-up energy so that's what you should see if you see an individual sitting by themselves or even in communications with an individual rocking side to side or back to front all right if there's no clear physical pain uh, the person is obviously going through a high degree of stress uh, to an extent where the nervous energy is actually provoking movement uh, in the individual as a way to express itself, all right, surging through the um, the body of that individual. So you'll see this behavior as an example. I'll paint a picture with someone who is waiting for a job interview. Uh, so seated down, they may be suited and booted and looking good and trying to consciously stay calm and composed. But outside of their awareness, as they're thinking about how they're going to uh, meet the boss and shake their hand and stuff, you may see them rocking from side to side um, as a way to uh, sort of express that energy so it's not all repressed and bundled in and ready to explode, all right? Um, potential, let's have a think. So, let's say um, an artist, a musician prior to an event, or let's say a um bodybuilder about to go on stage or a weightlifter about to perform in front of an audience that pent-up energy as they're waiting for their time to go out their time to shine they'll be 
so flustered and so built up of this nervous, ecstatic, electrifying energy that they may be, you know, moving from side to side and rocking, all right? To re-clarify this signal's emotional discomfort, all right? Because even though it may be a positive thing, a musician performing, doing what they love, a weightlifter performing, doing what they love, it may be a positive thing, but biologically speaking, their brain is still going to perceive it as a potential threat, especially if they're going out in front of an audience of strangers, all right? There's a whole wealth of factors involved, which could be deemed, um, you know, fearful. It could be approached in, in a fearful manner, so... Uh, we rock the body to regress back into that childlike infantile stage alongside expressing that energy, okay? The rocking can vary in intensity dependent on what degree the nervous energy is felt, all right? So somebody may be absolutely flying from side to side without even knowing about it, okay? Um, dependent on how they feel obviously if someone's doing that and is moving with such an intensity you can equate that to uh, the intensity of the state of mind that individual is in at that moment in time okay uh, if we do want to go back to the childhood stage but a little bit later to the rocking and the um, coddling of the child we can have a look at that child a little later on in life um bundled full of energy full of beans and this child is bored and hasn't had the physical outlet okay necessary um so so what this child is going to do is is going to rock side to side front front to back in a um, very hyper manner okay such as a child who's had too much sugar he's going to rock back and forth side to side because he's got all this bundle of built up energy that needs to release itself somehow okay um it's an uncomfortable sign it's a sign of discomfort because this energy could be brought out in a more um you know positive means but rather so it's having to express itself in just a very um you know indirect discreet way um signifying you know a need a need to do all right anyway i hope you enjoyed this lesson click subscribe it's been everyday superpower thank you